What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a trading update as well, talking about what I did today in terms of my trades and a rundown of what other positions I'm currently in as of right now, April 16th in 2019, as well as getting into this huge news that we got regarding Qualcomm, and Apple. And guys, Qualcomm stock has gone absolutely parabolic since this news came out. And we're going to be talking about that very briefly in this video, as well as some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching here and looking to trade heading on to the rest of this month in April. So before we do get into all of these different topics, all I ask from you guys, if you find value in these videos, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're actually new to the channel, I have two links down below in the description box for you. One of them being our free Discord group chat and the other one being our free Facebook group. I guarantee you guys will find a ton of value in those two communities. So get in there now and we can get talking and you'll see and talk to about 600 plus other people in that Discord chat. And again, I guarantee you'll find some value you in there. So let's talk about what ended up happening today in the overall markets. It was again a pretty boring day at the close. We can see here the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies ended up closing the day a mere $1.48 in the green up 0.05%. So a very minimal green day in terms of the S&P 500 here. The Dow Jones Industrial Average actually had a pretty decent day, a better day than the SPX. It was up about $67, roughly $68 at the close, up 0.26% here. And the NASDAQ is currently up about $29, but remember this is the future. It's up about 0.38%. So let's hop over here to the one day, one minute and see exactly where it did end up closing. So it seems like we ended up closing roughly at about 76.70, which is about five points lower. So you can say roughly a 25 point green day today in terms of the NASDAQ compo uh, the composite here. Yeah, so let's talk about a little bit more in depth on the SPX here. What I am seeing and a lot of questions I've been getting is where do I see the SPX going in terms of the technical? So let's do a very quick rundown on what I am seeing right here. And based on what you guys see in terms of these two red trend lines, you know, these resistance and support levels that I've drawn out, you know, we can see the S&P 500 is currently trading right in between those levels, right? Right in between the 29 level and the 2915 level. These are the two levels we've been talking about over the past couple of videos. And if we hop here to the 20 day, one hour chart, we can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? And for, for those that have been asking what I see in the SPX, I see honestly the uptrend still being intact, right? We, we push to the higher high here at about 2915 ish, 291606 to be exact. We got rejected by that resistance level, which was a support level from back in the end of towards the end of September in 2018. And we pulled back today, actually, and retested this old resistance, which is now a new support at around 2905, which if it holds, and let's say tomorrow we pop up, this would be the confirmation of a higher low from the previous, which means exactly what I've been saying, that the uptrend is still intact, right? So as of now, guys, the uptrend in the SPX is still intact. And what I would be watching for tomorrow, if I were you, and what I'm personally watching for is one of two things. Are we going to maintain this level of support here? Are we going to slowly start to push back up and test the 2915 level and maybe break out of that level for another higher high? Or 
you know, are we going to break this level of support and maybe slowly start to test the next res or support level rather at this point, which is roughly at about 2895. These are some things, two scenarios that I'm watching for tomorrow, but as of right now at the close of the market, the uptrend is still intact. We're really trading between 2905, 2915, which is about a 10 point variance as of right now at the close of the market. And keep an eye tomorrow, guys. You know, what are the future? Futures doing? What are the large caps doing? Remember, it's earnings season right now. A lot of big name companies are reporting, and this can really fluctuate the markets, right? If guidance is down, if a lot of the big names, you know, miss on EPS and revenue, the, the growth slowly starting to slow down. You know, this can really change up the SPX, which is why it's just super important to do your daily analysis. So let's hop over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average and very quickly. We can see today, guys, that we actually broke out of the resistance that we've been talking about at around $26,400, and it seems like we're maintaining that level as a new support now. So if we're hopping over here to the 20-day one hour, we can see this a bit better, right? We popped up to about $26,500, which was a higher high from the previous. We broke out of that level of resistance and we pulled back from there. And if we see on the one day, one minute, we can see this, you know, we gapped up, we aggressively pulled down to that level of old resistance, which is now a new support at around 26,400. And the fact that we're seeing not one, not two, not three, but four, Four bounces on that new support level. That's a good sign that the Dow wants to maintain this level as a new support, that it wants to really start to push up to the next resistance, which at this point I believe is around 26, uh, uh, 700, I think it is, right? Let's just take a look and double check that. Yeah, it's about 26, 800 actually, which was a resistance from back towards the middle of the end of September in 2018. That is what I'm looking to see uh, really happen for the Dow Jones right now based on the close of what we saw and we actually ended up closing the day on a nice little pop here we can see the big sell-off we retested it at about 336 with about 24 minutes left in the market eastern standard time and we popped up from there closing on a nice little upswing so this is a pretty decent sign that the dow wants to continue to push up from here and it wants to slowly fill the gap back up to that resistance which is the next resistance at about about 26,800. So keep an eye on those levels. Let's go to the uh, NASDAQ very quickly, guys. We can see now, we've been talking about this um, uh, resistance, old resistance, now a new support at 76.30. It's very clear now that we clear now that we broke out of that level, right? And we're looking to, uh, let's actually hop a little bit closer here because I think we did end up breaking this channel that I have drawn out for you guys here, which I actually talked about in yesterday's video. So this is a very good sign that we want to continue to push the uh, uptrend here on the NASDAQ. And remember in yesterday's video, guys, how I was talking about how we broke out of the 7630 level we maintained it as a support but we were still struggling to get out of this resistance roughly at about 7655 ish right we can see the resistance there there again right here you know here for a couple of days really for about a five day span from 410 to 415 we were struggling to break out of that level and the fact that we popped up higher today we got out of this horizontal channel here we pushed out we made a higher high we tested the 50 SMA, bounced nicely and pushed to that higher high. That's telling me that the NASDAQ on a technical basis here wants to continue the uptrend and really wants to test those all-time highs that are very, very close at this point, guys, literally 50 points away, you know, give or take 50 points away right now from all-time highs. That's literally, guys, a big green day tomorrow or two little green days. Let's say we have two 30-point days. Literally, if we had two more days, Days like this, you know, 29 point days in the NASDAQ, we're going to be at all time highs, which is absolutely unbelievable. So just keep an eye tomorrow. You know, are we going to maybe pull back and test the top of that channel at 76.55 as a new support? You know, are we going to pop up and test all time highs, which at this point, you know, let me just pop this out because 
we can draw a resistance now finally for the all-time high you know that's going to be what i'm watching for tomorrow in terms of the nasdaq and of course a lot of big names are reporting earnings this entire week you know the rest of this month heading into the beginning of may so keep an eye on all of those names as well because like i said earlier this is going to have an effect positive or negative you know on the entire stock market so that's what i'm looking at you know that's my little brief market analysis for today guys let me know what you think about the market i would love to know just drop a comment down below right now and let's just talk about very quickly what i did today in terms of my trading so I honestly didn't add money into any of my swing positions. You know I'm in AMD, and you know that I'm in Apple, so I don't really want to spend too much time on those. But the gist of it, guys, is we're seeing AMD finally popping above $28, which is a pretty good sign. It didn't close above $28, which I'm a little bit, you know, at about. But tomorrow, hopefully, we can get above that $28 level, maintain it, maybe push to the mid-28s, and that is where I'm looking to add more money into AMD but as of now I'm just simply holding my shares from the 2740 level and I want to see it close above $28 I thought we were going to get it today because if we go on the one day one minute we can see how positively it did this morning and we were consolidating nicely at that 28 level but we dipped at the end of the day which pissed me off a little bit I wanted to close above 28 here but tomorrow hopefully we can close above 28 maybe push to the mid 28s and again that is where I'm looking to add more money into AMD Apple is is another one that I'm currently swing trading, guys. Today we got to pop up the 201. We sold off a little bit to about 198. That news with Qualcomm came out. We popped up to 250. Then we sold off to about 199 excuse me, 25 at the close of the market. And I'm in Apple roughly at about 197.20, right around that range of about one uh, nine or not 127, 197.20. And I'm just simply holding my position, right? The goal here is to see a break out of this $200 level of resistance. I want to see it maintain that level as a new support and then slowly start to truck its way up to $210 per share. And as of now, my goal sell target on Apple is roughly, I think, around like 205, 206 is where I do have my limit sell as of right now on Apple. And honestly, guys, that is all I'm swing trading right now, right? You saw my video yesterday where I took that little loss uh, on NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA, and I'm just holding AMD and Apple, right? So let's talk about what I did today in terms of my day trade. I actually took a little position on Bank of America here, and this is actually a company that reported earnings this morning, and let's see what they reported in terms of earnings. And for those of you guys that don't know, there's a little live news tab right here if you're using Thinkorswim, where you can see some of the big news that's coming out in terms of the different stocks that you're doing your analysis on right and typically during earnings season you can see if you scroll down a bit you can see what companies did in terms of earnings like the basic numbers right you can see here uh let's see if i can get it um bank of america quarter one eps of 70 cents per share beats the 68 cent estimate okay eps beat for Bank of America based on what the analysts were expecting, which is a good sign. And sales, they missed very slightly here. They reported $23 billion. They missed by $23.3 billion, uh, or they missed the $23.3 billion estimate. So based on those two uh, big metrics here, typically when earnings are announced, the two biggest metrics we're looking at are EPS and you know, revenue slash sales, right? So those were pretty decent for BAC. The little miss on revenue was, it was okay, right? But still, I'd say based on the two metrics of those, that's a pretty decent earnings report, right? Especially the way, you know, the economy is right now. I'd say that's pretty solid. So we saw they reported earnings pre-market here. We saw a pretty big sell-off from $29.95 down to about $29. And what did that do, guys? That opened up a pretty big, margin of profit here and if we just see exactly how much that did end up opening up if we go to my drawing tool very quickly 
this opened up about 3%, right? And we noticed here, you know, once we opened up, we sell that we sold down to about $29. We started to trade in this horizontal channel, right? Support at around $29 to $29.05, resistance at about $29.15, right? And let me get my little channel tool out for you guys so I can show you exactly what I mean here, right? So let me just click it very quickly. I hate this thing sometimes. I swear it doesn't work. All right, here we go. So right? You guys see what I'm talking about? So pretty much this morning, I was waiting to see where BAC was going to bottom out, right? And again, we were doing this little horizontal pattern. And then once we broke out of the resistance, we started to form this little cup pattern, right? And remember, whenever we're breaking out of the resistance of a horizontal channel and anything you're watching, that is considered a breakout pattern, right? So this was a breakout pattern in BAC. And from there, just see how it took off, right? It pretty much got all the way back up to the pre-market resistance at about 30-ish dollars, you know, towards the end of the market. And I capitalized on this trade. This was a pretty textbook trade, to be honest with you guys, right? We popped up and honestly, I got in as we started to break into the 2930 level. And this wasn't a big trade whatsoever, guys. I got about, you know, 1.2, 1.3% profit on a very quick little trade here. And from $23, guys, honestly, I ended up getting in at 2930, roughly. Not, I said 23. 20, I keep messing up the numbers today, guys. I don't know what's going on. I think it's all of these earnings reports that are coming out that keep messing with my head. But from 2930 up to about 2970 ish is what I. I ended up trading um, BAC here. So a very quick little day trade textbook breakout play here. And it really just filled the gap from pre-market hours after it sold off after that earnings report. So that is the trading update for today, guys. Nothing crazy. I'm just really enjoying the time that we're in. Earnings season is my favorite season in the stock market, guys. We get four of these per year, obviously. You know, we have quarterly earnings. And it's just an awesome time, right? Because stocks are extremely volatile. You know, the market's typically volatile. There's a lot of plays out there. It's just a fun time in the market. So let's talk about what happened with Qualcomm and Apple very quickly. Then we'll get into a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching very quickly here, heading into the rest of this week. And remember, we don't have Friday on in terms of trading, right? The markets are closed on Friday. So just a heads up to everybody out there that doesn't know that. So I have an article here on Qualcomm. So Qualcomm shares soar as Apple agrees to settle bitter licensing disputes. So for those of you guys that don't know, not going to go too in depth on this, but Qualcomm and Apple, they've been at war. They've been in litigation, legal disputes here for quite some time, right? Which explains why Qualcomm shares soared like crazy today. And let me just pull them up for you guys very quickly. You know, once this was settled, just take a look at this, guys. This is absolutely unbelievable. From $57 all the way up to $74 right now after market hours. That's nearly a 20-point move, literally like a 28% move here on Qualcomm aftermarket hours. So let's talk about this a little bit more in depth. So Apple and mobile chip maker Qualcomm have settled a bitter financial dispute centered on some of the technology that enables iPhones to connect to the internet. So Qualcomm has its chips in the iPhones. A surprise truce announced Tuesday came just as the former allies turned antagonists were facing off in a federal court trial that was supposed to, supposed to unfold over the next month in San Diego. So take a look at this, guys. The deal requires Apple to pay Qualcomm an undisclosed amount. We don't know this yet. I don't know if we will know it. It also includes a six-year licensing agreement that likely involves recurring payments to the mobile chip maker. So this is a very good sign for Qualcomm, guys. Recurring payments to the mobile chip maker. That is very, very good. So neither Apple nor Qualcomm would comment beyond a brief statement. Okay, we saw that. So both of these companies are actually reporting their earnings. One on April 30th in terms of Apple and Qualcomm is expected on May 1st. Apple had been seeking about $1 billion for money that Qualcomm was supposed to rebate as part of a earlier licensing agreement. Apple had begun to have misgivings about that deal as it added more features to its increase 
increasingly popular lineup of iPhones. So take a look at this, guys. Qualcomm was seeking $7 billion for unpaid royalties it contended it was owed for its patented technology in iPhone. So Apple and Qualcomm were actually in a dispute about this, right? We can see here Apple had already lost an earlier battle with Qualcomm last month when a federal court jury in San Diego decided the iPhone maker owed Qualcomm $31 million for infringing on three of its patents. So as of now, guys, this is some pretty, pretty good news in terms of Apple and Qualcomm. And we saw how crazy Qualcomm stock reacted. Apple, not so much, right? Not so much. But some more things to know here. Qualcomm still faces other potential fallout from its demands to be paid royalties in addition to the fees it charges for its mobile chips. The Federal Trade Commission has accused the company of using its royalty system to stifle competition in the mobile chip market in another case in which Apple played a central role. So that's pretty much the rundown in terms of Apple and Qualcomm. I say one of the bigger things about this, guys, is the deal now with Apple and Qualcomm includes a six year licensing agreement, which is pretty solid for Qualcomm. So just keep an eye on the stock. And this is going to segue into what I'm watching for tomorrow, guys. So tomorrow, this is kind of the same mentality in terms of my mentality with Qualcomm that I approached with Disney stock, right? Both of these stocks pumped up a crazy amount in a day. Obviously, Qualcomm doubled what Disney popped up because Disney popped around 12%. Qualcomm's popping about 28% here, which is absolutely unbelievable, and it's still climbing. And I'm honestly approaching this with the same mentality of waiting for a potential pullback for an entry, right? I'm sure a lot of people out there, you can't argue that Waiting for a pullback on Qualcomm right now isn't the sound trading decision, right? Just take a look at this, right? Who would honestly hop into Qualcomm right now as a swing trade, right? Not only are we nearing those all-time highs, if you hop into Qualcomm right now as a swing trade, you're betting that there's more upside here than downside after this news and after this massive pump. And that's a pretty bad bet in my personal opinion, right? Because we're actually already near those all-time highs. If we hop to the three-year chart here, the all-time highs, guys, they're about $5 away from where we are. Actually, no, 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 not $5 away. They're about $2.50 away from where we are right now. So ideally here, guys, Qualcomm, I would love to see a pullback, maybe a put option play here for maybe for it to get back down to maybe $66, which is the old resistance, now a new support. You know, this is something that I'm watching in terms of Qualcomm, right? If we do get a pullback here, this could open up a nice long position, especially with this news, this relieving news with Apple and Qualcomm. Because to be honest with you guys, I haven't touched Qualcomm due to this, right? This kind of scared me away because anybody that's in litigation with, with one of the biggest, strongest, most valuable companies in the world, you know, I kind of don't want to invest or trade or be a part of a company that is really in a dispute like that. So that's what kind of kept me away. But now that a lot of that is fizzling away, you know, Qualcomm is opening up pretty decent, if it does pull back, a pretty decent opportunity here, right? So Qualcomm I'm watching that one tomorrow. Let's just hop into Disney here. We're actually seeing a bit of a pullback starting to happen here in Disney, right? We ended up closing under 130 today, about 129.90. You know, we're at about 130.25 here after market hours. And you see this resistance here, right? Older resistance, now a new support for Disney. Am I saying it's going to pull back all the way to 120? No, right? But if it does pull back maybe to 125, maybe 1. 124 you know, maybe a couple of bucks lower from where we are now, I think that's going to be a pretty good entry point for Disney. And that's what I'm waiting for for the rest of this week. And honestly, for the rest of this month here, 
in the stock market. So Disney and Qualcomm, I'm watching them. They're kind of in the same scenario, same situation where I'm just waiting for a pullback. I'm waiting for the technicals to look a bit more attractive before hopping into them. But both of these do have some pretty positive catalysts right now that could drive the price, you know, in a positive direction. But first, I would love to see a pullback before we do continue to head in that positive direction. So in terms of stocks, guys, you know, Disney, Qualcomm definitely are my top two on the watch list tomorrow. You know, Apple, of course, let's see if this is going to react. I don't think it's going to react too much tomorrow, but I'm keeping an eye on Apple, especially if we get into the 200 level to add more money to it. You know, Facebook today, we struggled to get out of the 180 level. We kind of did for a brief bit, but we ended up pulling back down to 179.03 here after market hours. It's looking like we are maintaining that level as a new support, but would love to see it push more into the 180s before taking a uh, swing position on Facebook here. Netflix is actually another one I want to talk about. We saw Netflix report their earnings. I actually didn't get a chance to look into it too deep, but we saw, I read in the chat as well, that guidance was low. Yep, here it is. So Netflix tops Q1 expectations, but the Q2 guidance disappoints. So let's see exactly what their earnings ended up being here so I can see uh, for myself, but if we don't see it here, no need to distress it. Uh, here we go. So EPS sees quarter two EPS of 55 cents uh, compared to 99 cents estimated sales at 490. Is that is that right? So they reported 55 cents of EPS compared to the 99 cents estimated. Oh my goodness! If that's true, that's pretty bad. Yep, that's pretty bad. But uh, what was it? The sales? What were the sales looking like here? Let's go back down and take a look. So $4.928 billion in sales versus $4.95 billion estimated. So that's not too bad in terms of revenue, but I have to double check on that EPS. If that's right, that's a pretty bad miss on EPS, which honestly could explain why Netflix actually moved very poorly right after the market closed. Oh my goodness. It went down to $320. $26 per share. That's unbelievable. That was very brief, I believe. But we popped down to 326, guys, which at that point from the close of the market, that was about a 10% drop right after market hours. And now it seems like the price has settled a bit right in that 357 to about 356 level, right where a little bit under where we ended up closing. So not too bad right now in terms of the price, but keep an eye tomorrow on Netflix. Are we going to slowly start to sell off due to this earnings report, due to the poor Q2 guidance? You know, this is something that I'm watching. So keep an eye on all those tomorrow, guys, in terms of stocks. That's all I got for today. If you enjoyed this video, Feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. Hit that subscribe button while you're at it and get notified every time that I do upload a video. And drop a comment down below. I would love to know what are your thoughts on Netflix, the market in general, earnings season, you know, Bank of America, Johnson & Johnson reported earnings today as well. Just let me know, guys. I would love to know what you guys think about this. As always, I appreciate every single one of you guys watching. I love you guys. Peace out. I'll catch you all in the next video.